right, good afternoon, 31 minutes past 12, welcome, welcome, it is still your favorite show, your number one show, the midday show on your number one talk radio station on the planet, this is Lagos Talks 91.3, and right now it is time for us to find out how we can be better individuals, and of course, more so, better parents. Now, it is time for parenting today. This is that amazing show where we get to talk about parenting. Parenting Recording in progress. Parenting in itself is a never-ending, never-ending effort and job. I call it a job. It's a full-time job. It's a lifetime job. However, find out how you can do better. No one is perfect, but there is always room for improvement. And this is that one show where you get to learn more as regards playing the role of parent or guardian. You do not have to be a biological parent or a child or, you know, a minor to actually play the role of parent. Now, if indeed there is something that's closest to perfection as regards expertise on parenting. It is right here on this particular show. And I'm speaking about my co-host. My name is Paula Chine with me, my co-host, Miss Yeti Williams. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Paula. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Awesome. I'm doing great. Thank you. Thanks for asking. All right. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty pumped up as usual. But hey, today's topic is is more like a general one, right? We know that the family is, for me, is the most important unit of society because a good family will turn out good kids who are good individuals that bring about, you know, goodwill and, you know, they're just responsible in society. Now, I like today's topic because it's one that focuses on not just parenting itself, but the whole family and all of the whole family, everyone who's a member of the family. Now, today's topic is how to relocate properly. And I know that in this, uh, you know, in the last probably eight, seven, eight years, Nigerians, there has been a mass exodus. Everyone's just trying to go out. It doesn't matter where to, but no one just wants to stand and wait on something. You know, everyone's just trying to find out how to do this. But Miss Yeti, for someone who has, you know, first-hand experience and you know you're you're actually in that line i want to know how can someone possibly relocate you know his or her family all together doing it the right way can you kindly take us through this today yeah thanks thanks for the intro and you know the reason we're talking about this like you rightly pointed out is a lot of people are relocating for several reasons you know we've We've turned it into the term, what, well, Japa, right? Are you Japa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, are you Japa nation and all of those <laughs> things. And the truth is that, you know, especially when people are relocating, not as a single person, you know, it's one thing to, like I lived in the U.S., I moved to the U.S. after I finished Queens College for university and then lived there for about 10, 11 years before I came back to Nigeria. Mm. And living in the, living abroad then as a single person who went to school then started working, dating, got married, is a very, very different reality mm. than when you're doing it as a family unit with children. Oh. And, you know, with the work I do, so two things is really speaking to a lot. I hear, I hear a lot, right, both from one-on-one mm-hmm. clients and just stories that come my way because of what I do. And one of the things that's very clear is that if relocation and the process of relocating, which, by the way, I feel includes sending a child abroad to school. You might not be moving as a family, but you are relocating that child. True. You know, True. you are sending them to boarding somewhere. And if you don't get it right, that child can have a lot of negative um, experiences that doesn't help, you know, what it was that you were trying to achieve when you send the child abroad anyway. So I found that there are three main areas that really cause that can make the relocation process smooth or very, very, very challenging, right? And on that spectrum, there are many shades of what smooth means, just as there are many shades of what challenging means. There will always be some challenges through life anyway, especially when you move abroad. So the three main areas that I continuously see can cause a lot of stress for families that move abroad is number one, the immigration route that was used to move. True. 
The second is around the choice of school for the child, mm. you know, and the third is really around where families um, choose to live and call home. So the neighborhood that they go into. Actually, I think I'll add a fourth one. The fourth one being around, you know, the financial implications mm. of moving. Wow. You know, if it's not planned properly, there are too many unfortunate stories of people who have come here and then they almost wish that they didn't because when they get here, there are things they wish, oh my God, I wish I had known. How come nobody told me, you know? So we can delve into those areas a little bit and hopefully we also get time for people to maybe quite call in and ask real questions about what they hear versus what is actual. All right. Thank you so much. Now, I love that you mentioned certain factors such as, you know, choice of route, what, how they're going to, you know, get to where they want to be. You know, uh, you mm-hmm. also mentioned the financial, what I say, the financial responsibility. Now, that is a part that a lot of people are not ready for because mm. there's for people who might not have, you know, traveled out. There's this belief that once you travel out, opportunity is at the airport waiting to welcome you. And it is a different ball game sometimes because the world has experienced the global crunch, you know, economically at different points in time. So I want to ask Miss Yeti, uh, if you're advising someone who hasn't, you know, been out of the country before, however, they're planning to possibly do that, what would you tell them to foremost prepare for financially? What do, would mm. you tell them? How would you tell them to, you know, look into things or expect Mm. things you know so even if you've been out of the country before you could have traveled before right but traveling and going for a few weeks is very Mm. different true from living here so i don't even want us to focus on only if maybe you've never traveled before left nigeria before that's not even a factor when we talk about financial budgeting so a couple of things when you're moving here to live here it's important that the, the family, I was talking about families here. So let's say a family of, let's just use a scenario of a family of four, mom, dad, and two children. Okay. Now, when you're looking for housing here, especially when you don't have a credit history in these countries, you know, the Western world is very big on your, your credit history. Do they have any picture of who you are? Like, can we see you've been earning, you have a credit card, you've been paying it off? All of those things or maybe you land here and you don't yet have a job or you're looking for a job or you've just gotten a job and you're just the first month in anybody who's going to rent a house any landlord renting a house is going to look at certain things mm. so if a family is coming fresh from nigeria for example and you are quote and unquote not in their system here a lot of landlords will not rent to that family month on month what they mm. will require is anything from six months sometimes to a year of rent ahead of time wow wow So imagine you're coming and you haven't planned that that maybe you're going to be in this particular area they also have criteria around the kind of housing they will give you so you can't come and say that the money you have ah, you will just manage one bedroom with a family of four landlords have requirements so they will not rent a one-bedroom apartment to a family of four there are certain requirements that must you know, check the box. So imagine you land and you don't know that. So one of the first things would be create a rough budget, which includes your housing. So that's why your neighborhood is important. Where are you going to be living? Being in central, let's use UK as the example, being in central London, for example, is very different in terms of rent versus if you are living outside London. So Mm. how much is the rent in the area you are looking at? And then you want to budget to have at least six months to 12 months of rent money ahead of time that you might need to pay to get your family accommodation. Wow. So it is quite demanding for someone who might not have thought this through. Um, I, I, I like that you mentioned choice of area to live in. So for someone who's, you know, thinking, oh, what's the best area to live in? I know that some of these places that are considered the best for children, families to thrive are possibly expensive. I don't know. I stand to be corrected. However, what would you tell someone who's aiming, you know, going for somewhere that seems pricey, but in the name of, oh, I know my my kids are going to be safe and perhaps is close to some very good school. And, you know, mm. my neighbors are going to be responsible citizens right. of society, members of society. So what would you tell someone who's thinking that way? No, absolutely. You know, you can you can come and say you're going to go to the cheapest place possible in the uk in terms of housing cost but then what that means like you've rightly pointed out is the potential downside what kind of neighborhood is it 
what kind of schools are in that area if your children are going to be day students and you go to an area where the zip code or the postcode the schools there are not great schools then you are exposing your child potentially to more danger than if you stayed in nigeria and wow. they are in a quote and unquote good good enough private school or so in nigeria mm -hmm. so you have to look at the neighborhood because it's not just about is it cheap i'm going to the cheapest place cheapest places therefore mean that usually the schools around might not be the best you know in terms of accreditation and the quality of education your children might get and also the neighborhood who's in the area who's living there you don't want to move let me just use an example you live in ikeja and then you come and move to somewhere that your neighbors are just not the kind of people you want to mix with so what mm -hmm. that means once again is going back to the I actually have a post on my Instagram page where I put some highlights on what you need to consider. You need to plan, plan, plan. That means doing your research before you land here. And I want to quickly add something here that we, I don't know if we'll have time for, but I think it's important to drop is that for some people, they start the application process, hmm. right? Wow. Everything okay. goes through. And then there's a time limit between when, you know, you've been, you've been approved to move here and when you must get here there's a period of time and if that period of time lapses you might have to start the whole application again so for a person or a family who didn't do a lot of this research ahead of time what could happen is when you then get approved to move here you are suddenly in a rush to ensure that you get to the uk within that time period they've given mm, you yeah and then you don't do all of this research and planning properly so you just basically come and you try to figure it out when you get here which is the worst Thing you can do. Wow. Um, so I like that you mentioned, you know, there's usually a window period. You're told to quickly, you know, come over and, you know, start your life and ask for the migration process. When we have to go on a very quick break, thank you for mentioning that. When we come back, I have a couple of questions that I'd like for us to, you know, to look at, you know, questions as regards uh, opportunities, racism, stereotypes, and the likes. I would like for us to talk about it. But thank you so much, Miss Yeti, for, you know, enlightening us. For those who are planning to migrate with their families, this is amazing. You should be listening and listening more so attentively. We're going to go on a very, very short break. When we come back, conversation continues. Now, this break is going to be less than two minutes, and I mean it because I can barely wait to find out more. I mean, it's good to plan ahead, right, before my family comes. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Miss Yeti. And when we come back, I'm going to open up the phone lines right away so we can just dive into all of the conversations and the questions. This, of course, is your home of conversations. It is Lagos Talks 91.3. It's a Children's Day Radio Takeover. On Lagos Talks 91.3 FM, we will be celebrating our Children's Day on May 26th and the children are taking over the station. Special appearances as child hosts for the day, child news anchor, and of course, the ultimate inter-school debate for secondary school students, where students will slug it out on the theme, the people versus the leader. Who does Nigeria need to change the nation? Children's Day will be fun, thrilling, and educative as the children take over the studio. More importantly, there are lots of prizes to be won. Thank you. If you want your school to participate or you would like to sponsor, call 0809 9113 It's the Children's Day Radio Takeover all day on the 26th of May right here on Lagos Talks 91.3 FM. This is Lagos Talks. Let's get talking on Lagos Talks 91.3. This is Parenting Today on Lagos Talks 91.3. That's right. It is Parenting Today on Lagos Talks 91.3. Welcome back to the show. Now, I told you before the break, I was going to open up the phone line. If you're just joining us, this is Parenting Today, a show where you get to learn how to be a great parent and more so how to treat your child, just not like, you know, not just only as a child, but to ensure that you're doing the right things that would help them evolve into being great individuals. Uh, you know, my co-host is an expert. She is the CEO of Lagos Moms. Her name is Miss Yeti Williams. My name is Paula 
And yeah, we're going to go back. Now, today's topic, we're talking about how to relocate with your family properly. There's always something amazing about this show. Welcome back, Miss Yeti Williams. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Paula. All right. So uh, please, uh, just a minute. I want to open up the phone lines and then I'm going to ask a few questions. Um, if you want to call in, you want to join the conversation. Now, you can do that by reaching out to us. First off, you can send us a uh, a tweet on Twitter. You can tweet at Lagos Talks 913. That is our handle using the hashtag parenting today. You can also send us a message on WhatsApp. Now, the number for WhatsApp is 0809-234-5913. And you can call other numbers as well if you want to have a chat with us. Uh, you can call 0809-234-5913. You can also call 0809-222-0913. Uh, there's a women-only line just for the ladies. If you're a lady, you want to call, it is 0809-191-3913. And landline number is 0 915 um, Miss Yeti, uh, I'm sorry, we have a question from someone on WhatsApp. Do you mind if we take it right now? Oh, go ahead. Okay, so this person says, hi, ladies. I've got a question for Miss Yeti. I have been listening at work here and I'm in the UK. I can see a lot of things she has said is 100%. However, how do you restrain and protect being immersed into a foreign idea? That is from Olukayode from the UK. Hmm, I'm not sure I understand that question. How do you restrain from uh from being immersed into immersed like to be put into a like to be indoctrinated mm. a foreign idea mm. perhaps as regards topics such as sexuality mm. or faith uh okay, yeah. so he says a child like he means as regards gotcha. a child, yeah, how do you maintain your culture while right. in a bit limiting them being immersed into a different culture mm. you know that's a that's a million dollar question because the truth is that your children are going to pick up the norms of wherever of what their environment is so if for example from his name obviously he sound, he's nigerian so if you're a nigerian parent who moves anywhere you know with a child to a western world depending on the age of the child it might be very difficult for the child to quote and unquote stay nigerian whatever that means for you so some of the things that are helpful is to ensure that you have a healthy community of other like-minded Nigerians around you, because that is helpful. If you go and live somewhere where it's majority, for example, British, there are very few Nigerians or even black people around. How are the children going to, you know what I mean, mingle with yeah, other true. with other Nigerians? How? Mm. And what we look at we can't, with um, you know, people like Indians is that a lot of Indians they have almost areas that are Indian. They're predominantly oh, Indian. True. They still dress the same. You know, they have their communities very tightly together. So as a result, it's hard for, and you will see some Indians here who are second generation, and they're still so Indian, even though they were born and raised here. So their accent obviously will be different, but in terms of their culture, their beliefs, all of that is still very ingrained. So I believe as Africans, we need to be more intentional about that and focus less on, ah, I'm just happy I got, a, I got a abroad. I'm just happy I jackpot. No. Let's start to think, how do we move abroad and ensure that we can create the environment where our children can continue, you know, to learn our values and our cultures and all of that. But we can't do it alone. You can't do it by yourself. You really need to plug into those communities. So that's what I'll suggest. All right. Thank you so much. Now, this is one of my questions in the sense that, you know, uh, some people are worried about relocation because with it comes ideologies and different cultural values. Now, you know, in more recent times, people are discouraged because of, you know, there's this debate on uh, sexualities and disorders and the like. What would you tell a parent who's quite worried as regards that? Like, you know, I don't want to go, I don't want to put my child in an educational system that says I can't determine their uh, sexuality or their beliefs or, you know, just different values and ideologies. What would you tell a parent who's a bit confused mm -hmm. and struggling with that? So it's a real concern and it's even more of a concern if you move with very young children who haven't really formed a picture, right, of who they are 
or what they believe in and then you bring them into an environment where what they are hearing in school doesn't necessarily match what you say at home and in fact we have a situation that is real here in the uk where if some parents actually lose um acts i mean they lose care of their children because the child goes to school and says something that in the school environment is seen as a trigger right okay so like a child for example goes to school and says my mom or my dad smacked me oh. that is a problem here in the uk and some parents have actually had to deal with social services because they smacked a child so wow. imagine you're coming from nigeria where your parenting style is i will beat sense into you <laughs> and then you come here and you continue to do that parenting style here for a child who is going to talk naturally in school because they might even just be conversing the child might not mean to put their mom or dad in trouble but maybe in school it comes out that oh yeah ah my head is hurting me because ah i was not yesterday and mommy really you know it could be something that innocent and it's picked up and suddenly these are real things happening wow right yes. so you so it's a real situation now what are the concerns and what i would say is before you come you need to do your homework don't just come because some people get here and then that's when they look for the school that's available around them. You have to ask certain questions about the school. Ask them, how, what is their curriculum? What do they believe in? How do they give this scenario? Every scenario you're concerned about, I would say a parent should ask. Ask the school, heads of school, for example, what do you do in a situation where maybe a child is having you know, gender fluidity issues? How do you handle it? We cannot hide away from these things anymore. And it's when we are aware and we ask the questions, we can then take a stand. You can either decide, well, that's not the school for me, or I'm going to homeschool my child, which is an option, or I'm going to look for a faith-based school that I know certain things are not allowed. You need to be very clear. And this is where the planning, planning, planning comes in. Wow. So it is. it entails a lot of research. Uh, yes. Thank you for that. Thank you for telling us. Now, please, I want to ask you, what about... Uh, a budget is there a particular range in terms of price because someone here uh, a tire from Ebutamata is asking for a particular range if someone was to decide okay this is a budget for a family of four how much should they possibly be looking at if they're going to the UK right so I'm going to plug something in here I actually created a small handbook because of so many questions I get regularly mm. and I've put it together into a very simple in, in, you know interactive guide ebook for you to jot things down so within that is a link to you know we have webinars regularly here for families here in the UK talking about things like housing planning for it what areas so we have if you if you go to my link in my bio on Instagram at Lagos Mom there's a link to the ebook ebook that will give you this information you're asking for because you have to be able to budget. But at the very minimum, you want to look at the area you're looking for, go on certain, the certain websites all included in that um, handbook and it's not expensive at all. Um, and you can start looking at, okay, if I'm looking in this area, this is the range of rent. You then want to take that rent, you want to multiply it, right? Like we've yes. said by about six, okay. so that you can have that amount. Mm -hmm. You then want to also start looking at, okay, what is expected in terms of Rent is one thing. You're going to pay internet, you're going to pay water, you're going to pay electricity, you're going to pay gas. You want to put all of that in. Once again, multiply that by six. Do you see what I mean? Mm. That is when you can start adding it up. And you will see that there are some areas you haven't thought about. So that book highlight or ebook, I'm even call it a book because it's a very simple, quick guide. But each section forces you to ask yourself questions about, am I really ready? Have I asked all the questions I need to ask? Wow. And also your immigration route plays, plays a big part. So if, for example, you are coming as a student visa, right? You are the mm. parents coming as a stu on student visa. Your spouse is coming as dependent. There are certain restrictions on how many hours of work you can do. Mm. So wow. once again, if you didn't plan properly, you can only work maybe 20 hours. You are in school. You can't afford to not um, do well in school because that is the condition on why somebody is here so there are so many things to balance yet we have some people who come for work for school the pe the spouse comes as a dependent they cannot get work maybe they can't work for more than 20 hours they are living in a house they have children mm -hmm. there is no um care in the house so who's going to take the children to school come from school do you see how all of this yeah real it's, it's, it's really uh demanding it's, it's very demanding, demanding. so if you don't plan properly you know, you talked about something that you would ask me before we went on the break. You said, talking about opportunities, 
Exactly. You know, it's only the person that has settled in properly that can start looking and seeing what are the opportunities. Really? That will break a lot of hearts because people just believe there's this notion that, you know, as it's the land of opportunities. That's from the airport. You're getting a job. I, I know someone who called me yesterday and said, oh, he wants to travel somewhere in Europe, uh, you know, Eastern Europe. And I'm like, why? And he says, oh, within six months, I'm going to pay back so so and so amount of money. And I'm just thinking... He's not, he's not traveled before and he doesn't know, you know, there's this ideology that is just so easy over there. That's why yeah. I was really concerned if you can kindly advise, because sometimes when yeah, you're telling yes. people, they feel like you don't support their dreams. So it's like, right. okay. so it's very important, right? That people are aware, no, nowhere is, is are the streets paved in gold. Okay. Nowhere. There's no part of the world where when you land, all your problems are solved. Gone. Mm -hmm. and sold no in fact for the person for example who says when they want so we had a session you know i said we have this regular webinar just helping people move in here to integrate properly is the way you apply for jobs here is very different from how you apply from jobs in nigeria your mm. cv has to be different what you mm. put on your cv has to be different the language you use has to be different so somebody who says they want to move you better start doing that work before you come wow Start networking. Start ensuring that you have transferable skills. It's really important you think about transferable skills. You can't just say, oh, because I worked in a bank for 20 years and I was, you know, I don't know, the head of the tellers or whatever. When okay. I come here, immediately, I can just go straight into customer service. Not necessarily. Mm. They might not see you the same way. So it, it, for me, it's very sad when people come here and then they are disappointed. Then they are dealing with this, this stress. Exactly. And sometimes then mental health challenges come in. So before you come... Highlight what are you trying to achieve? Are you coming to get a job? Okay. Are you sure that you started talking to some recruiters? Are you using LinkedIn, for example? LinkedIn, right? They say 75% of jobs or something now are filled through LinkedIn. Are you on there? Is your profile properly optimized so that when somebody is looking for you, when you land in this Eastern European country, for example, immediately you've done some groundwork to help you get the job. So as Nigerians, we have to get comfortable with research. Mm. We have to get comfortable with due diligence. Speak to the right people. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes also we don't like paying for services. So yep. a service could be, let me spend time and pay for one hour with a coach, for example, or a consultant. Who can I help mm. me with my relocation plan? They can say, for what? And she, all of them have done it before. Yes, you might think it's expensive. But if you pay that, I don't know, 200, 300, 400 pounds, whatever it is, to talk to somebody who will help you with your plan, it's better than getting here and paying tens of thousands and you realize you didn't come the right way.